Right, today's date is Sunday, May 14, 2017. I've got another lesson in the New Testament is Fake series. This lesson is entitled Illustration. And my focus is on two words, exemplify and illustration. I will begin with the word exemplify, read some scriptures, and then I will end with the word illustration. Looking at the word exemplify from the dictionary, it says to illustrate by example, to serve as an example of, law to make a certified copy. Now if I look at the etymology of the word exemplify, it says here from online etymology dictionary, early 15th century as a verb, to illustrate by examples. So notice they keep saying examples, right? To instruct by good example, and they've got good in brackets. From medieval Latin exemplificare to illustrate. From Latin exemplum, meaning example, pattern, model. Meaning to serve as an example. So as they're saying here, pattern model so the the illustration or the example that is given that points to the word exemplify you are giving a pattern or a model of what you are trying to exemplify and when i think of this with this whole hebrew mashiach i don't see that he actually shows the israelite an example of what they supposedly believed he came to do, which is to save them. And so what Israelites have done is to settle for a Christianized view of the quote-unquote saving of the Mashiach, who it's very clear was coming to do a physical saving. Notice that the spiritual saving understanding of the Israelite is akin to the saving, the spiritual saving of the Gentile. Because the Gentile was not looking for a physical saving to go into a physical kingdom the way the physical Israelites had physical salvation from their enemies in the Old Testament, like in the book of Judges, and returned to their physical territories. So because the Gentile did not have that physical promise for a land where the Most High was going to place his name in and walk among them and so on, like it's going to happen again in the future based on prophecies, then they had to resort to the trickery of a spiritual salvation to deceive people and try to sell that to the Israelites, which as I've shown many times in my videos in this series, that the Israelites did not buy that because their own common sense told them, no, you're not going to trick us with that. There is a physical salvation should come. We've, we've waited all throughout our history for a physical salvation. And, and keep in mind, just like when Cyrus came, they were looking for physical salvation, right? And the times when they're leaving Babylon and so on, they were always looking for a physical salvation because their forefathers got a physical promise. Or a promise of a physical salvation for a land that they were going to have where they can operate their kingdom based on the most high's instructions so the gentiles not having that set up a spiritual saving a spiritual salvation to deceive when the israelites in the time right after jesus would not accept that they were slaughtered because they were the antichrist and as i've shown before you and I today as Israelites are the Antichrist. That's why the New Testament, as I've shown before in a recent video, the New Testament says there are many Antichrists. When we were younger, they told us this big thing about the Antichrist, like it's one. But as I got older, I realized it said, even now there are many Antichrists. Why? Because we are the ones waking up. We are the Antichrist who will drop off and shake off this African slash European Messiah, Jesus, or Yahawashai. We are the Antichrists who fight against this because our Creator did not tell us to worship Him or to choose Him 
in any way. The only time the Israelites should have chosen a God, as far as I can recall at this moment, which the, command, the Creator commanded them in this way only as far as I can remember, this is the only time they were commanded to choose a God. When they were coming out of Egypt to go into Canaan, they were instructed to choose gods to break down. So an Israelite would go up there and just choose this God, that God, this God, that God. All of them would just go and they would just choose a God to, to break down. So whatever God is in front of you, you're going to break down that one. You're going to choose to break down that one. The next Israelite right beside you is going to break down the one in front of him. That one over there to the left is going to go over there and break down that one that's closer to him. The one way over on the right is going to... And that's how they would move through the land of the Canaanites and they would choose to break down the gods in front of them that they're closer to. And they kept moving on, moving on and breaking down the other ones. That's the only time you can choose a false god. You should choose not to worship it, but break it down. That's the only time. Now, it says there are many Antichrists, so we are. So, now when you look at this word, exemplify, to illustrate by examples, the, the Israelites were looking for their own place to go back to. Look at this verse here from the New Testament. Since you like the New Testament, let's read to you again from Acts chapter 1, 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, meaning asked in Jesus, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he gave them some ridiculous answer and said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons. But, I mean, uh, it's just silly. They're looking for their kingdom. So they're asking about that. He can give them all kinds of spiritual knowledge of Torah that he has. He can tell them all kinds of love thy neighbor. He can tell them all kinds of nice spiritual stories. That actually sound very good. And and the, a lot of the stories he told were actually righteous stories in, in terms of what you can gain from them. But don't Buddha teach some nice stories as well? And other holy uh, masters teach nice stories as well? So they're like, we don't care how many nice stories you got. And you can tell us about Isaiah, the prophet, and all these other ones and... When it comes down to it, you must illustrate what you are talking about, this salvation that you came to give. You must illustrate it by physically giving us our kingdom. When are we going to get our kingdom back? Oh, it's not for you to know the time. Exemplify means to illustrate by examples. He needed to illustrate by showing them that he was physically going to resist the Romans and give them their kingdom back, give them their freedom back. Not no Christianized Gentile uh, spiritual salvation. Because when we physically get our salvation of getting our land back, then we will spiritually experience salvation or freedom in our heart. So he was failing, this Hebrew Mashiach, to illustrate by examples. But of course, you and I both know that the creator slash the power of Israel from the Old Testament had physically exemplified or illustrated by examples time and time again that he physically saved or provided salvation for his people from different enemies, Amorites, Philistines, Egyptians, etc. He exemplified it in the Old Testament. So if Jesus or Yahweh or Yahushua is coming in the New Testament saying, before Abraham was I am and I and my father are one, he should be doing the same kind of thing. He should exemplify that. But what does he do? Instead of exemplifying or illustrating by example in his time that he's going to give them physical deliverance like the power of the Old Testament did, he instead told them to turn the other cheek. Pow! And not only did they have to turn the other cheek, their enemies turned it for them. Because when they pow and slap you in slavery like that, don't talk back to me, boy, don't talk back to the, you know, they slapped you so hard you spun your, your, your cheek, your jaw, then they slapped the other one. They didn't even stop there. They slapped you all over, kicked you, you're down on the ground, they're kicking you in your belly everywhere, chopping off your foot, your hands, everything. Why? Because you're not just going to just turn the other cheek to them to slap. They're not just going to slap the other cheek. They're going to slap you silly, chop off your limbs and so on, and put your food, like they did to us in slavery, in horse troughs or whatever you call it, and that's where we were taking our food from sometimes during times of slavery feeding us like an animal and you still want to turn the other cheek 
So now let's get off the word exemplify and I'll read some scriptures here and then we'll look at the word illustrate. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So if you're leaving the way of understanding or knowledge of Torah, the wisdom that comes from Torah, from following the Most High only and the other laws that are there, you will remain in the assembly of the dead who do not have life because they don't have Torah understanding and do not follow Torah because Torah is life. So when you follow the teachings of this Jesus New Testament and his disciples turned apostles, that's where you end up. And you want to tell me that, well, I can believe in Jesus and believe in Torah at the same time because I believe in Torah even though I believe in and teach Jesus. But you see... Usually these people who are teaching about Jesus and they keep Torah, they will tell you in their life, most of them, that they were only believing in Jesus and then they have to hear from an Israelite about Torah and then they say, oh, that's the understanding. Oh, Jesus is the fulfillment of it according to the proper Torah understanding. Because why? The New Testament on its own is not designed to give you Torah along with Jesus. The New Testament, when you read it, it clearly shows that it is designed to tell you a little about Torah in terms of what the prophet said, like Isaiah and so on. This day is this fulfill, scripture fulfilled in their ears that Jesus said. It's designed to tell you just a little in order to get you to believe the new teachings. And the proof of that is that most people on the earth, whether they're Israelites or Gentiles, once they get heavily into the New Testament, they come out with a new covenant understanding. When I say new covenant, I mean New Testament understanding, I should say. It's only after the fact does one return to Torah who is taught about it, or who gets some understanding from the Most High directly like myself. Nobody sat me down and told me about Torah for me to say, oh, Israelite, that came to me first. And then I started to research and found people out there teaching. So the New Testament is shown to captivate most people on the earth who believe in it and bring them over to a New Testament only understanding and they bash or put down. They can bash, you know, vociferously or just quietly the Old Testament Torah teachings but they more will keep to the New Testament so in that way they remain in the congregation of the dead because this Jesus or Yasha is not of the Most High Proverbs chapter 2 verse 13 for those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Uprightness, it's keeping Torah and so on. Jeremiah 6, 16. Looking for the old paths. To walk in the ways of darkness. If most of the people in the world, Gentiles, are believing in Jesus, it must be a part of the ways of darkness. Because most people on the earth will not like your God, will not like your Elohim, will not like the Creator. So if the masses are gravitating to a particular God and the end has not yet come like in Malachi and Isaiah 2, 2 and 3 where the Lord is going forth from Jerusalem if that time has not yet come and we all know it has not yet come then if most of the world is gravitating to a particular deity that is not your deity because most of the earth will not like your God of Israel so Jesus must be wrong there is not going to be a Jesus craze on the earth for so many Christians Spreading your gospel with their big money that they're donating all the time to spread the gospel all over in the islands and in parts of Africa and trying to infiltrate underground with underground services in, in China and Korea and other places. Most of the earth is not going to be pushing your Jesus deity if he is the real deity. Most will not. Come on, just think of it. Because most of the earth does not lie. So if most of the earth is in darkness, what they do is dark. 
Ezekiel 18 verse 24, but when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and does according to all the abominations that a wicked man does, will he live? All his righteous deeds which he has done will not be remembered for his treachery which he has committed and his sin which he has committed. For them he will die. Look at what he's saying. He's saying a couple of things here. According to the abominations that a wicked man does. The, the Israelite was, was supposed to have common sense and wisdom based on Torah. So if Israelites before the time of Jesus... Like in time of Abraham and and others, there Moses and so on, were and, and Joseph, if Israelites were not seen bigging up a cross in a massive way in the Old Testament with the prophets and so on, Amos wasn't all over this cross thing, cross, 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 to show that he's an Israelite, not believing in. And don't tell me it's because it wasn't time for the cross yet, because cross was already in the pagan religions in a massive way in ancient times. And you very well know it. The Ankh. And if you look online you, and, and in books, you will see all kinds of cross. I remember when I first found out that we're Israelites, I, I believed it from a child from about 10 years old that we must be the, the children of Israel. But I was so young and in the Christian church, nobody knew of it. There was nobody to answer me. So I just put it away in the back of my mind, left it alone, and I continued to grow up as a Christian. But when I, I realized that we are the Israelites, I went to the library, uh, there's only a very small library where I'm living right now, but at the time I was living in another city, they had this massive library, it was just so sweet, and I got this book on ancient tree worship, dealing with tree worship in Germany and, and other places before that, and it also had a, a Christian cross, and they showed the different forms of the cross, how it had changed over history, from ancient times up until now, and I was in shock. The cross has been around for so long. So, so I mean, the Israelites knowing the cross was around in the times of Joseph when Joseph was in Egypt and, and Egypt had a form of the cross as well. And Amos and Jeremiah and all these prophets, they did not associate with the cross. Because if the cross, if they were the prophets of Israel and they were prophesying of one who was going to die on a tree on a cross, you're telling me none of them would just have loved a cross in their time? They would have been making pictures of cross. You said they had candlesticks, so why wouldn't they make up cross? Because this cross signifies to us, or is a symbol of our future salvation and resurrection through Jesus Christ, who is going to die on a cross, according to all these prophecies that we, the prophets of Israel, are prophesying. But they never did that. They never made no crosses for themselves, because cross was not theirs, it was for pagan religions. So they knew and could tell the difference between the cross religions and, and other such belief and what they were supposed to believe and know through the wisdom of the Most High regarding Torah. So they could tell the difference. So why is it that by the time New Testament comes around, Israelites cannot tell the difference between this cross religion of Calvary and what the Israelite is supposed to believe? And you're telling me they just bought into it? No, they didn't. It's a lie. They did not buy into this cross religion of Calvary, of this so-called Messiah on Calvary, because they knew that their forefathers did not associate with a cross as a major symbol of their salvation. So they resisted, I'll tell you many times, they resisted and so the Romans slaughtered them and some of them were able to escape and run to Africa. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 19 and 20 When they say to you, consult the mediums and the spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people consult their God? Should they consult the dead on behalf of the living? This verse here is telling you that it is making a comparison between two different kinds, the dead and the living, the mediums and the spiritists who have their own God and and the Israelite is supposed to have their own power. So the Israelite is supposed to understand and know that there is a difference. And it goes on in verse 20 to say, To the law and to the testimony. So it's showing the difference now. The spiritists and mediums, they have their own gods. That is according to dead 
to, to dead things and darkness and so on but the Israelites is supposed to have the law and the testimony so it says to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them in other words illustration which i'm going to look at shortly there is no light in them means it is because there is no effect of illustration in them nothing illustrating or showing some wisdom and light and life based on torah and once they have that illustration in them that light that clarification of truth in them they're not going to be attracted to know jesus you're telling me isaiah and others prophesied about jesus and they never started talking about jesus no, he never prophesied about you worshipping Jesus. Jesus is going to come and die on a cross. He was prophesying about the sufferings of the nation of Israel. Who was going to suffer and be wounded and broken. And was going to be despised and rejected of men. And Israelites have been despised and rejected of men even up until our modern history here. Despised and re rejected. If they were loving you, they wouldn't ask you to walk over a plank and throw you over a ship to teach the others a lesson. When you're trying to revolt on the ship, they threw you overboard, they kill you and so on and throw you overboard. Because they did not love you, they rejected you. You were rejected and despised of men. You were rejected and despised of men. You were rejected and despised of men. That's why Leopold could cut off your hands and so on, because you were despised. Say my name is Toby. Say your name is Toby. My name is Toby. Why? Because even your name was dis di rejected. Even your name was despised. Your Hebrew name, it was all despised and rejected. Last verse and then I'll get into the word illustration. Isaiah 42 verse 16. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. Because we've been blinded by these other religions like this Jesus religion. And all the religions that I've found so far, or most of them, that I've been mentioning um, and come across in this New Testament is fixed series is really about Jesus in some form or another. And and that's going to become more clear because I've sat in it for uh, nearly a year now, but lately I've been starting to just throw it a bit in peace here and there. But now I'm starting to talk about it more. So I've, I, in the next couple of months, I'm sure I'll be talking about how I have traced Jesus from the first religion on earth, from the first religion on earth, according to the books and the information I have been able to come across. And I will bring the blind by a way that they know not. I will lead them in paths that they have no that they have not known. Why? Because we just knew the path of Jesus for the ones of us who believe in Jesus. That's the path, right? Paths that they have not known. So he's gonna lead us into a path that we we have not known, which is a Torah path that says do not worship these other gods. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. And even by these many videos that I've been putting out, and the ones of us who are teaching these things, excuse me, he is making crooked things straight. It is crooked to believe in Jesus because it it intertwines and meanders through the Old Testament scriptures in order to trick you. But he, by coming like this with many, many videos as I've been showing from different angles, the creator is straightening out the path that you should walk showing you how to get off that crooked path straightening it out so you can think in your mind and see so you listen to one video and you curse me out but when you listen to two and three and four videos then you start to see oh, okay I, I get it now because you see when you have a very very well put together thousands of years old deception you're not just necessarily going to hear one teaching on it or just read one page from a book and understand when the person says this is a trick you would have to read quite a few pages of the book to realize that, oh, wow, this is really good. I'm starting to see now. So you can finish reading the book or so you can read more books. And when you hear one video, it doesn't always get you. Now, sometimes it does. But a lot of times you have to listen to more. And it's funny, most of the people who actually contact me to let me know that they are thankful for these lessons that I've been teaching with the New Testament this faith. Most of them express that they have listened to the videos, plural, because it takes a couple of them to show the point that I'm making. And then people who I would think would have never come to this understanding because they are so entrenched in the Jesus teaching and who are in their own camps that teach heavily about serving Jesus are starting to see it and are concerned that their camp teacher is not seeing this stuff. 
they're starting to see it. Even Christians I've talked to who were even my friends that they hugged this Jesus for so long in their heart for so many years and I was a Christian with them too long time ago. It takes a while, but eventually they start to, to get concerned because they realize, okay, something is wrong. I think this guy is saying, uh, I think he's saying something. They start, because five minutes of conversation doesn't do it. The first conversation doesn't do it. But as we keep communicating, then slowly they start. So most of the people have to listen to a few of the videos to get to start to see because you are learning something. It's just like Torah itself. You don't just say, oh, I'm an Israelite, and you read Torah the first day, and you read four chapters, let's say, and you, you know Torah. No, you got to study it repeatedly. Every day, every day you're learning Torah, you're learning something else to get an understanding of what the Most High was trying to do through Israel. But I find the majority of the people who are fighting and cursing with me fall into two categories. One, they 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 close off themselves from Torah or from Old Testament and they don't care about it. So they curse this teaching because, you know, they don't, they don't give consideration to Torah. And some of those are Gentiles who don't care and they're in the Christian church and so on. And some don't even go to church, they say, or any kind of religion. They just, you know. And then you got the other group of them who are Israelites and they're fighting down this teaching because they believe in Jesus. And some of them are making money from it. Um, and so because they believe in Jesus, they have little toleration for strong teachings like this that are com that's coming from so many angles. So they just start to curse quickly without looking into it because they're not trying to learn. They're trying to take this down. That's what they're doing. They're trying to fight against everyone who's teaching this stuff. That's what they're doing. So they aren't listening to them all to learn anything. They're listening to find some way that they can trap me to say, oh, you mentioned this verse right here and uh, that's not, I understand that's wrong. Or you quoted something wrong and so on. Well, big deal. Listen to the whole video and then listen to more if you are trying to learn. Because from my early videos, I have stated that maybe I have made some kind of error from something, um, let's say about a geography, if I'm mentioning a location, I've made a mistake there and said it was this place when it was actually this place because my memory has just failed me at that point. But any such mistake I made would not take away from the overall gist of what I'm teaching in that lesson, which is that Jesus is fake. If I mention something about Jesus and I, or about somebody who was walking a certain place and I said it was Cappadocia when it was someplace in Galilee, um, that's, that's just a lack of proper memory at that point. For example, it doesn't take away from the, the whole lesson I'm teaching and the truth of what I'm trying to share. So, you know, and yeah, things like that. Anyway, so yeah, these things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Okay. So now let me look here at the word illustrate from the online etymology dictionary again now illustrate as a verb from the 1520s it says it meant light up shed light on and as far back as i can search um i mean it's coming back to the same thing with exemplifier and illuminating right so light up shed light on from the 1610s educate by means of examples a back formation from illustration and um, means to light up, make light, illuminate. Sense of provide pictures to explain or decorate. So illustrated as an adjective means provided with drawings, etc. as illustration. In 1831, the past participle adjective from illustrate as a verb. Illustrator as a noun means one who enlightens. From the Latin illustrate, an enlightener, one who one who draws pictures, and then it goes on showing that it's linked as well to the word exemplify, which I just mentioned at the start, meaning to illustrate by examples. So what these definitions for illustrate is telling you, what they're telling you is that you have to provide some kind of pictures to explain or decorate to make it clear. That's what I'm saying with this Jesus. They're asking him in Acts chapter 1 verse 6, what about our kingdom? When are we going to get that back? The God of the Old Testament, for the Israelites, he would illustrate 
their salvation but by providing the real picture of salvation which is actual physical freedom from your enemy and returning to your place to your land but we've got gentiles ruling over the land of the israelites the romans are there in jerusalem and its territories and jesus should have with his all power like he claimed he had illustrated for the israelite the real physical salvation that would let them solidify their faith in him but he failed to do that so then they had to run and flee because they resisted the israelites don't tell me about you giving me no upper room holy spirit i want some physical freedom here because israelites was used to already having spiritual knowledge and spiritual teaching and spiritual understanding now they want something physical to match that. Give us our freedom. If you are our king prophesied in the Psalms and in the prophets and so on, then demonstrate that. Illustrate that like the God of the Old Testament illustrated free, uh, full salvation to our forefathers by freeing them from bondage and from their oppressors. Illustrate that. Exemplify and illustrate it. He failed to do so and he lost them. They said, ah, uh -uh, you cannot be him. So they resisted the teachings of the Christians that was managed by the Roman government and the Roman teachers, the upper teachers in the Roman government were the emperors and the Caesars who set up the teachings and the treaties and, and the creeds and so on that they would believe on and they kept um, revamping it over and over, over and over. And they collected, um, I forgot the term now we use it, but in, uh, yeah, in the Council of Nicaea was another time one of these councils came together, operated by the Roman government back then. And they gathered together all the bishops. And if my memory serves me correct, here again, I say I could make a, a, a mistake with the number because it's been so long since I looked it up. But I think they invited and expected about 2,000 bishops from these so-called churches and Christian churches. And I say it that way because there were not all Christian churches that were operating in those times in that region and in parts of Africa. There were Christian churches, but there were also Mithras churches and churches or, or groups or gatherings for Zeus and the other um, groups that were there and also Torah teaching churches and so on, who was being covered over more by the, the power of Rome, taken over more, bought out and sometimes just straight conquered by the sword and threatened by Rome. And they all came together and instead of 2,000 of them showing up only about 327 if I remember correctly bishops actually showed up and some of the bishops fed and some were killed and some managed to escape these bishops but some of them stayed to cast their votes and to participate in this particular council of Nicaea <laughs> and so the history says that Rome went on to do its thing so the bishops were supposed to try to side with this whole teaching of this Mashiach that Rome was setting up, trying to tell the world and the Israelites that he is sent from God, from the Creator. Why were Christian bishops running? Because not all of the, the Christian bishops and pastors agreed with it. They knew it was all lies that Rome was setting up. They knew it was. And some of them were just teaching Torah alone and were forced to attend and didn't want it. So while some of them sold up because of fear of the sword, some actually ran and were killed. And like I said, a few of them managed to escape. And that's why you find over time the church or Bible teachings continued to spread so much so that Rome was trying to go and travel now with its soldiers, its army, to go and take over these churches in different parts of Ethiopia and other places in Africa. Um, why? Because some of them fled and continued to teach their Torah stuff or their other kinds of teachings that Rome didn't agree with and Rome wanted to subdue them. So Rome went around trying to force them to, to, to sell by, by pressing them with offerings of gold and so on. And if they didn't, then Rome would confiscate their books and also kill them by the sword, with the sword. That's how it happened. Rome was going around trying to 
to, to subdue them. Because if they had all agreed at the Council of Nicaea, Rome wouldn't have had to put so much money and effort and time and manpower into going to find these different church groups or camps. That's why Rome was doing it. Because they didn't all agree. So it wasn't just the Israelites who didn't agree. You had even some Gentiles who didn't agree with what Rome was doing. And some of the Gentiles who did not agree could see that Torah was, was the truth. And others didn't necessarily believe in Torah, but they just knew this Jesus Mashiach from, from Rome was a fake. And they didn't agree. And there was this empress, I can't remember her name, I think her name was Fiona, which I covered already a long time ago. Even she knew that the Israelites were given a bad deal and they knew that she knew that Torah was the truth because she could see from their teachings and from the way they carried themselves that they were different from the Christians and from the doctrine of Jesus based on what Rome was pushing. And she actually favored them. So Jesus failed to illustrate his salvation and show it and so he lost them unlike the power of the old testament slash god of israel who illustrated his salvation by giving freedom to his people not just no inner spiritual salvation in your heart